church, a light to our neighborhood, a beacon set on a hill. We aim to be a beacon of God's good news in Antioch and wherever he places us to live and work. We are here to demonstrate to others the good news of Jesus Christ, to restore life. We build community and build up the body of the church in God so that all are actively involved in the past. Go, be fruitful and multiply. Morning, church. Morning, church. You're at home today. Welcome. If you're online, feel free to leave a message. Let us know you're there. Uh, who watched the coronation yesterday? Did anyone watch it? What did they do differently this, this time? They gave everyone the opportunity to pledge allegiance to the king. <laughs> but who's going to pledge allegiance to the real king today? The real king of kings. Exactly, exactly. That's the one we pledge allegiance to. Not a man who's flesh and blood just like us, but God. I'm going to ask Janet if she'll come and open in prayer. Good morning, if we can pray. This is the day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad. Lord, we stand here today and to say thank you for who you are, for where you are, for what you have done and for the things to come, dear Father God. Lord, we saw history in the making with the new king and queen and the words that I heard was, I have come to serve and not to be served. Lord, a change is coming and we have to thank you for it because you have changed us so much, dear Father God, and you will change us. You will change our minds, our hearts. I pray for those who don't know you today, dear Father God, that they can have some sort of relationship and begin to know who you are. Let us lift your name. Let us sing your praises. For those who are here in church, we welcome you. And for those online that will see this later, we welcome you. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for that, Janet. Yeah, we do see, we do, we are going to see a change, but a change is down to us. It's not just, we can't just leave it to God. We, it needs to be a decision we make to change. And that depends on our attitude, our attitude to life, our attitude when we come to church. I'm going to read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, just a bit of it. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days, as there was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time, while Eli was turning, uh, laying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the, in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was right lying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call, lie down again. And he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, here I am for you called me, he answered. I said, I, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord yet, nor the word of the Lord was yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And so he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. That made me think, why are we here today? Why have we come here today? I know we want to pledge allegiance to the King of Kings, but why are we here today? You get so many people going to different churches, they try and find preachers who suit their style, what they like, or tickle their ears. And some will say, a preacher's too charismatic, a preacher's too fleshly, a preacher's too boring. But they're missing the whole point. 
They're missing the whole point of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can make stones cry out. He made a donkey speak. If you're just going for your, for your own entertainment, you're not really coming to worship the Lord. When you look up there, do you see a preacher or do you just see a donkey or a stone? No, we need to come with an attitude of, here I am, Lord. Your servant is listening, speak. Are we here today to receive his word? We're here today to receive his word. We're here today to live his word, to take it with us, to take it on board, be be to become disciples of Christ and work at that. It's a two-way thing. God's spirit works in us, but we have to be obedient to that spirit if we want to grow. And if we want to grow, we have to be subject to him, not our own wills, not our own fancies, but him. Okay, I'm going to ask the worship team, and Nathan, if they want to come up after I've... Um, I don't have to pray, Janet's already done it. <laughs> if they want to come up and lead us in worship. Morning, church. Morning. Morning. So we're going to have a time of worship. So if you guys could stand up, it would be great. We're going to start off by singing about the good, good father that we that we have. Do feel free to clap and sing along. So, oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think your life, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Cause you're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am Oh, I've seen Many searching for answers Far and but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide because you know what we need before we say a word. Because you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, you're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, you're perfect in all of your ways you're perfect in all of your ways you're perfect in all of your ways to us you're perfect in all of your ways you're perfect in all of your ways you're perfect in all of your ways We sing your faithful in all of your faithful in all of your ways. Your faithful in all of your ways. Your faithful in all of your ways. Sing to us. Sing 
you're faithful in all of your ways. You're faithful in all of your ways. And great is thy faithfulness. Sing to us. We sing your righteous in all of your righteous in all of your righteous in all of your ways. Your righteous in all of your ways. Sing to us. We sing your perfect, your perfect in all. Your perfect in all. Your perfect in all of your ways. Your perfect in all of your ways. Sing to us. We sing your perfect. In all of your ways, your perfect in all of your ways, your perfect in all of your ways, sing to us one more time, one more time, sing your perfect in all of your perfect in all of your ways, your perfect in all of your ways. Your perfect in all of your ways. Cause you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, and you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. 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 Sing your good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. To I am. Hallelujah. Cause you're a good, good father. It's who you are. Hallelujah. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. So I was sing of the goodness of God. At this time, we're going to take up uh, our offering, so please do feel free to give. Because our God is good. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God sing, I love you, Lord I love you, Lord For your mercy never For your mercy And all, all my days, days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my life, all my life you have been Oh, my life you have been so
the goodness of God. We sing all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. We sing all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath. The goodness, the goodness of God. Let's just sing that bit. And all my life, and all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath, with every breath that I am able, so I will sing. Of the goodness of the goodness of God. So I will sing. I will sing. Of the goodness of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing. I will sing. Of the goodness of God. Not just for parts of my life, but all my life. And all my life you have been so, so good. So with every breath I am able. With every breath that I am able. I will sing. I will sing. Of the goodness. Of the goodness of God. I will sing. I will sing. Of the goodness. Of the goodness. Of God, I will sing. I will sing of the goodness, of, the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the faithfulness of God. I will sing of the kindness of God. Amen. You are such a good, good Father. Our Father everlasting, the all-creating One, God Almighty, through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Judge and our defender suffered and crucified 
Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light, forever seated high. I believe. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. And I believe in you. And I believe you rose again. And I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Sing I believe, and I believe in you. And I believe, I believe you rose again. And I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Sing, I believe in life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe, for I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade away until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. And Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade away until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Let all the other names, Let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade away 
until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. And Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Let all the other names, Let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names, Let all the other names fade away. Until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Let all the other names fade away. 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 Until there's only you. Until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your Sing, Jesus, place. Jesus, take your 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 place. Jesus take your Sing, Jesus place. take your place. Jesus take your and Jesus place. take your place. Jesus take your and Jesus take your place. Jesus take your place. Jesus take your place. Jesus take your Jesus take your place. Jesus take your begin to bless the name of the yes, Lord. Lord Jesus, place Let him take his place in this room today. Dwell in our hearts. Let all the other names Dwell fade away. Lord, we want to thank you for being in this place today. We want to pray that we'll let all the other names fade away, Lord. Hallelujah. All the things that are, are taking up our time over you, Lord. We want to pray that we'll be able to make those things fade away out of our life, Lord. Whether it be social media or whether it be work consuming yes, us, Lord. Yes. May those things fade away and may you take your place in our Amen. lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
just want to give Tim time to get ready, and uh, I'll bless the offering. Father God, thank you for this offering, Lord. Thank you that you give us the opportunity to worship you through offering, Lord. And maybe this offering be put to good use, Lord, that it may be spent on the things like not just the light bulbs, but other things that are needed to run the church and to, be, and to grow your kingdom. Let all the other things fade away. All the other things will fade away one day. We learned about that earlier on in Matthew about storing up treasures in heaven rather than on earth because they rust and go. You know, Jesus will never fade away. He is the king. He is the king. People missed him the first time because they were expecting a conquering lord, a conquering king, but they misunderstood he first has to suffer. But when he comes again, he'll come again in his glory. So we better be ready. And I hope Tim's ready. I'll pray for Tim before he preaches. Father God, I just want to put your servant Tim before you now, Lord. And us as well, Lord, that we may have receptive hearts to receive this word, Lord. Take it with us. And not just be here to be entertained, but here to hear your word and have that applied to our life, Lord. And let us be a word, for, not be from Tim himself, but from your spirit, Lord. The spirit is within Tim, that's working in him as he prepares this word. And that it will settle on everyone here yeah. today that they may take it with them throughout the week. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, um, I'm so glad for that time of worship, just to be able to draw close to the Lord again, aren't you? It's just so nice, so lovely to be there in his presence and just to, to make those declarations again of who he is and say, yes, Lord, we believe in you. Um, and, and what we're reading about this morning is, is really about people who did the same thing, people who said, yes, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you really are the son of God. I believe you're the son of David the one that was to come. I believe that you can heal me. I believe. I believe you can heal my friends if I bring them to you. I believe in you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to go with you. And so um, I just want us to bear that in mind as we're, as we're reading. And we're coming to the end of a, a sort of section of, of what Matthew wants to tell Christian disciples about Jesus and his ministry and about how he heals those who have faith and how he calls those who have faith to commit their, themselves, to commit their lives to him and to follow him in his mission. So Matthew 9, and we're going to read, um, I'm going to read this in three sections. I'm going to, we're going to read from Matthew 9, verses 18 to 38, and um, we're going to have the New Living Translation up on the screen in a minute, hopefully. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to just read through it now. I'm going to read through 18 to 26, and we'll think about what's happening here. Now, Jesus had just been, been talking to um, some people who have objected to what he was doing. Do you remember that? Remember, he's starting to get a little bit of flack, wasn't he, from people. Starting to get some comeback from people who were either confused, jealous, or um, wondering what on earth he was doing. So you, you have the, the, the Pharisees and others coming and saying, well, how on earth can you, know, you guys be eating and drinking with people like that? If you really knew what these people were like, that you're sitting down with and talking to, you wouldn't go anywhere near them because they're traitors and they are horrible and they are just the people. Can you imagine anyone like that? Do you know anyone like that? Just testing your own heart. Are there people like that that you would say, well, I'm never going to be sitting down talking to her or to him? I wouldn't invite that person into my home. Let's be honest. Maybe for safety reasons, you would say, well, I can think of a few people I wouldn't invite into my home. And yet Jesus would sit and eat and talk with these people. And he got, he got it in the neck for that. Because he said, look, it's not, it's not healthy you need a doctor. It's the sick that needs the physician. And so I've come not to call those who are right and good and think they're okay, but I've come to, to really reach those who are sick, those who really are struggling, those who are trapped, those who are um, 
and in bondage to sin in some way that has destroyed their lives. It's, it's, that's what he said to the Pharisees. And he said it's like the new wine that you don't put in the old wineskins. You can't cope with this. Your ways and your ways of thinking about life and about God, it just doesn't enable you to see and perceive and take hold of the kingdom of heaven. You've got to let go of your old way of looking at things. And uh, it was the same, wasn't it, with um, some of John's disciples who came and said, look, we're, we're, the Pharisees and, and us, you know, we're all fasting all the time and taking this faith seriously. And here you are feasting and enjoying yourself with these people. Well, you know, why don't you fast as well? And Jesus said, what did he say? Anyone know? He talked about the bridegroom being there in the wedding and saying, well, we, you know, the guests are not going to, fast and mourn and weep while the wedding, while the, the bridegroom is here with them and they can celebrate. Ah, there's going to come a time when they will fast and they will mourn. But right now, I'm here. You see, people just couldn't see that whilst Jesus was there with them, the kingdom of heaven was kind of breaking in, that a new time had started. We spoke about this this morning, didn't we? Um, a new time had started, a new age had begun almost. And it's almost like Jesus had leapt beyond the judgment and was beginning to show people what it would be like when he came again. Because there would be no more death. People were being raised from the dead. There would be no more sickness. People were being healed. There'd be no more slavery to Satan and sin and demonic powers that oppress people and destroy their minds. No more of that. And Jesus was showing what it would be like when heaven comes. So in the midst of all that, we have this verse. As Jesus was saying this, the leader of a synagogue came and knelt before him. My daughter has just died, he said, but, but you can bring her back to life again if you just come and lay your hand on her. So Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him. Just then, just then, a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe, for she thought, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be encouraged, take heart, your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that moment, or from that moment onwards, she was healed. It was a permanent healing. When Jesus arrived at the official's home, he saw the noisy crowd and heard the funeral music. Get out, he told them. The girl isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him. After the crowd was put outside, however, Jesus went in, took the girl by the hand, and she stood up. And the report of this miracle swept through the entire countryside. No wonder, no wonder what on earth was going on. Now, this ruler was probably one of the, um, the elders at the local synagogue, like being an elder in a church. So he'd been one of the team of trustees, of people who were spiritually um, mature and had been put in charge of the life of the synagogue. So he was well respected in the community. He was, uh, he was a good guy, if you like, we hope. But for him to come and to humiliate himself by bowing down on the floor in the house, because Jesus was in the house, uh, Matthew has told us earlier, um, uh, showed that he believed. He believed who Jesus was, despite all that the Pharisees had been saying. And he knew the opposition building. His daughter had died. He was desperate. His, the love of his life, this little one, had just closed her eyes in death. What was he going to do? He had nothing left. He, he didn't care about pride. He didn't care about what anyone might say. He knew that Jesus could raise his daughter from the dead. He'd seen that Jesus had done this. He, he was in Capernaum, where Jesus had made his home in that city, and where many people had been healed. So he knew what Jesus could do. He probably heard him preach, heard him teach. So he got down on the floor on his knees. He knew that Jesus, in his power and authority, 
could deal with death itself. And his, Jesus' response to him is, to his faith, is to go with him, isn't it? To answer his request. Jesus responds to simple faith. Jesus responds to our simple faith. And that's one of the first things I want to say today. It's not complicated to come to Jesus. Sometimes it's costly. Sometimes it costs you your pride. And what everybody else in your town is going to think of you when you bow down before Jesus and say, help me, Lord. The woman who'd been hemorrhaging blood for 12 years, she had the same belief and faith in Jesus' authority and power, didn't she? She could have been in a lot of trouble coming out and coming into the crowd like that because to other people, and especially to the Pharisees, she was somebody who was unclean from whom you could catch spiritual uncleanness and probably something else as well, because that's the way they thought. She would be willing to do this was just amazing. And all Jesus needed was that little bit of faith. They said, even if I touch the fringe, the edge, the fringe, you know, it's like, or oh, maybe he won't notice. It'll be flapping around in the wind as he goes along. So in that moment when he's leaving the house and heading off to the, um, to the, the, the other house where the little girl is, there's opportunity, isn't there? He's not now surrounded by lots of people crammed in in the house talking to them. He's off. He's moving through the streets. The crowd is moving. The people are moving. She's outside. She seizes her opportunity, and she grabs or just touches as he goes by. Nobody would know. Nobody would know. Maybe you're a bit like that sometimes. Are you like that sometimes with, with Jesus? There are many people in this world who are like that with Jesus. They want to know more, but they're either afraid or ashamed to come close. And maybe one day they'll come in and sit in the back row. Or they'll come into some event that we've got here, and they'll be ever so shy. And, but they want to find Jesus, because deep down they believe in him. So we've got to be so careful not to turn anybody away, haven't we? Whatever reason, whatever we think about them, whatever our perception is of that type of person, they may know exactly what they're looking for. And Jesus answers. That's all he needed. And what a lovely thing to say. You know, to turn around and maybe she's expecting something awful. But he just says, take heart. Daughter, take heart. Your faith has made you well. All that it needed was that little amount of faith. It wasn't that the faith itself um, had the power. It was Jesus who had the power. It was Jesus who had the authority but by having faith in, in him, she opened the door to that power and authority, didn't she? That's all it takes. That's all it takes. So both these people, in fact, the girl who has died uh, and this lady who had bled for all these years and suffered so much were seen to be unclean under the old system, the old wineskins, um, the old cloth that can't cope with the new. Jesus is so powerful that he doesn't come, become contaminated by these things. He doesn't become contaminated by sin. He contaminates it. Um, I don't know if ever, anyone's heard of Lyme's disease. Anyone heard of Lyme's disease? Anyone, put your hand up if you've heard of Lyme's disease. Put your hand up online if you've heard of Lyme's disease. I can't see you, but it's good to interact. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of pictures of sin. I remember when I was on my sabbatical going for a long, long walk on Exmoor down south with a friend who I've never, never, not seen for years and years. And he's, oh, he just keep walking all day. I think we walked about, um, I don't know, I don't know what the miles were, about 25,000 steps um, on that, in that walk over the hills and back again. And the next day, um, uh, uh, Edwina came down to where we were. Uh, she'd been up here in Birmingham. She came down to, the, to, to Exmoor to join me for a few days holiday and um towards the end of that day that day i was thinking oh i got a scab on my leg I got a scab on my leg oh forget about that i happened to turn around and look at my leg and there was a tick um that I must have got in somehow up my trousers um when i was walking or when i was sat eating my lunch on a grassy bank somewhere or brushed against the gorse bush because that's what they do isn't it they wait and they they suck your blood it's like a spider Except this looks like a beetle, but it has eight legs like a spider. Um, <laughs> and I was like, oh no, <laughs> what am I going to do? 
oh, I heard about Lyme's disease because you're told in that part of the world to look for ticks on your dogs or on yourself and do a tick check at the end of your walk because if you don't deal with Lyme's disease, it's a bacterial infection that can cause, um, can get into your nervous system, into your bloodstream, can cause problems with breathing, with joints, um, a bit like having rheumatoid arthritis or some crippling disease later in life as you go on. You have to deal with it. Um, so I was like, I don't know, what do I do? So I looked online, found the instructions, and get a pair of tweezers. And if you ever get a tick in you, there's a specific way of getting it out. You have to grab it by its beak. It's only tiny, so you need glasses or a magnifying glass. And you have to twist one direction and pull. It's horrible, isn't it? I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> I didn't want to do it, but I knew I needed to do it to get this thing out and make sure that I wasn't infected. I went to the doctor afterwards. Um, and uh, he, he put me on some antibiotics just in case, which is what they'll do, because they don't know. And I didn't keep the horrible thing. Apparently, you're supposed to stick it in a matchbox and take it to the doctor, <laughs> so, if you, especially if you feel ill, so they can run tests on it and see if there's any bacterial infection in the actual creature. Now, why am I saying all this? Because it's scary, because it's horrible, because it can lead to death itself. It can lead to crippling things that happen in your life. Um, and, you know, sin is like that. Sin is like that. Once you let it in, once you allow it to get hold of you, sin is like that. That's what the Word of God tells us. It's like getting an infection. It's like being bitten by a snake. A picture in the Old Testament isn't there when the people were in the wilderness and they, they had a plague of snakes. And um, it's a picture for us about the, the way that sin is like venom. It's like something poisonous to us. That if we allow it in, or if it gets into us, we need a saviour. We need a saviour because it will destroy us. Not saying that this woman had done anything wrong because we know that sin that we do and things we do wrong affect other people as well. Uh, we are responsible for so much of what happens in the world, which is awful. And yet we think that sin only affects us. I'm sorry, but it affects other people too. And it's the reason why the world is under God's wrath. It's the reason why these things happen. So you have to take it seriously. There's no such thing as a sin which is only bad for me, so it's fine, I never hurt anyone else. When you start to disobey God's law, you're breaking a code that causes the whole world to experience God's judgment. It's as serious as that. Well, Jesus is good news, isn't he? Because wherever he encounters sickness that's come because of our own sin, whether individually or as a world, as a community, as a family, then... His power and authority is like an anti-venom. It's like a cure that just goes through the whole of you and purifies you and cleans you and redeems you and rescues you. And that's what the word save means, isn't it? Rescue. So let's just read about a couple of other people who were um, uh, encountered Jesus. Matthew 9, 27 to 34. After Jesus left the girl's home, two blind men followed along behind him, shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us! They didn't just do it once. They were following him along, shouting, shouting, shouting. So you can imagine what you'd have been thinking, I've been thinking. If I was a disciple of Jesus or one of his 12, I'd probably been saying, Oh boy, Jesus, you really do attract them, don't you? Can somebody just tell that man, those men, to be quiet? But... But this is what happened. They went right into the house where he was staying, and Jesus asked them, Do you believe I can make you see? Yes, Lord, they told him. We do, we do. Then he touched their eyes. Because of your faith, it will, be ha it will happen, he said. Then their eyes were open, and they could see. Jesus sternly warned them, Don't tell anyone about this. But instead, they went out and spread his fame over all the region. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Couldn't keep it quiet. <clears throat> when they left, a demon-possessed man who couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. So Jesus cast out the demon, and then the man began to speak. The crowds were amazed. Nothing like this has ever happened in Israel, they exclaimed. Now, this is new. This is a new thing. And that's what Jesus was saying, wasn't it? The kingdom of heaven is here. This is a new thing. It's a new wine. It's a new cloth. You need to be ready for it. You need to accept it. 
But the Pharisees said, he can cast out demons because he's empowered by the prince of demons. In other words, he's in league with Satan. And that's, um, you know, if you, if you don't like somebody, that's what you'll say, isn't it? You'll turn everything around into a negative. And that's what they did with him. Well, why has he got power over demons? Well, it must be, you know, he must be in league with Satan himself. They wouldn't accept the new thing. They wouldn't accept the new thing. Jesus accepted the faith of the two blind men. According to your faith, let it be done. It'll be done to you now. Jesus accepted the faith of the friends of the, the demon-oppressed man who was mute, and he healed him. That's our Jesus. He accepts that simple faith. And then finally, Matthew 9, 35 to 38. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues, announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. What a beautiful picture of why Jesus had been doing all these miracles that, that Matthew records for us and has done here in his gospel. This is the, what was motivate him, motivating Jesus, what was driving him, his compassion, because he saw that people were both sick, ill, confused, helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And he pointed his disciples to this as if to say, look, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? They need the kingdom of heaven. So just get praying. And what did he do everywhere he went? What did he do? He proclaimed the good news of the kingdom and he healed the diseases and sickness. The miracles, the healings that happened that Jesus did, Matthew's saying to us, look, they've got a reason, they've got a purpose. They're pointing people back to God. They're leading them into his kingdom by giving them a foretaste of what that kingdom is going to be like one day. That's what God does, and that's what Jesus does today through us, isn't it? What a wonderful heart. Jesus is the good shepherd. So when he heals someone, he's doing it out of compassion. As he goes around doing this relentless, exhausting tour, he's doing it because he wants to see these lost, helpless, confused people come back to God and know that peace and that wholeness that comes from following him. The last two chapters in Matthew, and just remember that originally Matthew didn't have chapters and, and, and verses in it. They were put in many, many years later. Um, Matthew's gospel, the last bit, if you like, after the Sermon on the Mount, after Jesus' teaching about the kingdom, contains these nine different miracles, nine different miracles of healing and deliverance that Matthew picks out for us. And as Java said last week, some of them are really brief, and you can read more about the detail of them in other gospels. All of them demonstrate Jesus' power and authority. Right towards the end, we hear these blind men saying, you know, we believe you are the son of David. You are the son of David. You are the Messiah who was to come. The son of David, the son of God. And it also contains a miracle in which um, Jesus' faith in God and his power and authority are seen as he stills the storm. It's a miracle of nature, isn't it? as he saves his disciples from destruction and death. And that also is a picture of what he's doing in our lives when people, are, when people are sick, when people are weighed down with guilt and sin, and he delivers us. It's the picture of stilling that storm, having Jesus in the boat with you. We've also seen that Jesus calls and saves and heals totally unexpected people that we just mentioned. Often people who are abandoned, dismissed, derided, rejected, even hated by church people. And you know, we get a lot of um, quite, probably quite justified criticism from people who say, well, those people in church, they're all very happy with themselves, but they're just so self-righteous. They just don't want to know about us. I think a lot of that's probably justified, but it may be because they don't understand. If they were to talk to us in more detail, and if you're listening today, or you're listening after this service, Talk to us in more detail and you'll find that 
we're only sinners who've been saved. We're only people who've found release. So we are happy and we are joyful and we are triumphant because of what's happened to us. But we're, we're no better than anybody else. We've just received mercy and that mercy is there for you too. So maybe you feel like he's chosen you in the way he chose some of these people to be his disciples, to be with him, um, to be healed. And that's amazing. You can identify with that, that, that sense, like Matthew, who just got up and followed him. Maybe you feel like that. Or maybe he's calling you today to look again at the people that you see as rejected, as um, abandoned, avoided, to be derided, rejected, uh, and, and, and even hated. And maybe we need to change our mind on that. There's, it's wonderful to see how faith in Jesus, which individuals had for their own healing or the healing of their friends and family members, was all that was needed for Jesus. Power and authority to bring about complete rescue from those things that were destroying their life, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful? And he's looking for that same faith in us. Um, as we come, as we pray for people. We pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus didn't have to pray in his own name, did he? Have you thought, ever thought about that? He didn't lay his hands on people and say, in the name of Jesus, because it, he was Jesus. And that's all we're saying when we say in the name of Jesus. We're saying the power and authority belongs to Jesus. And we believe in him. And together with the person we're praying for, we reach out in faith to say we believe that he can heal you today. That's all we're doing. That's why we say in the name of Jesus. It's not magic words. It's just pointing them and remembering ourselves who we're coming to is Jesus, the one with the power and authority. So, um, you know, I've just been so struck, and I don't know if you have, um, by what we've been studying in the last few uh, months, by a certain sense of freshness about reading about Jesus again. And thinking, yeah, you know, we've got to take this seriously. We've got to think who Jesus is. We've got to listen to these words, look at him again, think, how did he behave? He's calling us to behave in the same way. He's calling us to have faith as these people did. He's calling us to, um, to go out with him um, and to, to reach others. He's calling us to have a commitment like Matthew did, like some of the other disciples. He's calling us to do that. So this morning, what I'd like us to do now um, is, is just to pray, and to pray for, for one another. Um, you might have somebody that you'd like us to pray for in the name of Jesus. Um, it would be really good to do that. We don't do it very often, um, but it would be good to do that and exercise our faith. It's good to do it so that we can pray for other people as well in the name of Jesus and offer to pray for them in our daily lives, isn't it? That's something that I know I do. Um, so this morning we're going to pray. And I just wonder if the Lord has been speaking to you this morning and you just say, well, yeah, you know, yeah, I do believe in Jesus. Would you pray with me this morning? Pray in faith that he will heal me or he will deliver me from what is really, really troubling me. You know, you may be, you may be simply troubled by something that keeps you awake at night or that is spoiling your relationships with other people or that is messing up your life and you just want to pray in faith, Jesus, will you deliver me from this? Will you give me your peace? You may be suffering from a physical illness, just as a lot of these people were, and you're thinking, yeah, just can you pray for me today? So we want to just spend a few moments doing that. And I'm sorry if you're online, um, we're thinking of you too, um, and I'm going to pray for you in a minute. <laughs> But um, we're going to pray here. So I, I know I'm going to invite um, Elaine is, is prepared to pray, um, and Stacia will come and pray. I'll come and pray. We might uh, co op one or two other people if we need to. But I just want to just do this simply with no fuss. We just come and pray. And we've got a little bit of oil here, I think. We have. So. It was very convenient oil that is in a, a spray bottle, so you can have just a little bit and not get messy. Never mind, one day we'll do it by pouring the oil over somebody's head. Um, but today, that's all we're going to do. So if we're praying for you, we may come with some oil on our hand and just touch your hand or touch your head and just symbolise the Holy Spirit working in you. Is that okay? That's, that's, that's very simple, isn't it? It's used, we're told in the Word. 
that um, we should do that. Uh, not in every case, but it's a one way to do it, to show that it's the Holy Spirit doing this work and not us. So if you'd like us to pray for you this morning, just pop, pop your hand up now and we'll just calmly come and pray for you and work our way around. So just put your hand up if you like prayer. Um, so Elaine, if you'd like to go over there behind you, just keep your hands up for a moment. Um, and Stacey, if you'd like to, to just start from this side at the front and I'll go to the back and we'll start to pray. That's good. And I wonder if Steve, you could just play some very quiet music while we're praying. And online, you could pray with us because there's a number of folks who put their hands up um, for prayer this morning.
For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God So I'm just going to pray quietly whilst we've still got some prayer going on here. <clears throat> I'm going to pray quietly for anybody who's online now and for anybody, if you're listening afterwards, you're watching afterwards and you're saying, that's me. So if you have faith, you believe in Jesus, you believe that he has the power and authority to heal, to rescue you, then just join with me as I pray for you and just say, yes, Lord Jesus, I, I want to, I do want you to help me come. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are the same today. Jesus is the same yesterday, this, today and forever. Thank you that you called us to be party with you in allowing your kingdom to come into this world in your name. And thank you that you're still healing, you're still rescuing, you're still restoring and renewing people's lives today. So for all those who are listening right now, Lord Jesus, thank you that you've heard their cry, that you do hear our cry and answer us. Thank you that you are working in their life and you've caused them to come in faith today. So, Lord, I pray, we pray together, come and pour out your spirit upon them, on each one that's crying out to you today. So in the name of Jesus, be whole. In the name of Jesus, receive your rescue your healing from him. In the name of Jesus, know that he has rescued you. Our oh Lord, thank you for your power working through us and in us. And we just ask again that we would see more of your power, more of your glory, more of your healing as we touch the lives of others. Because it's your power, your authority, and not ours. Lord, we don't come in our name. We come in the name of Jesus because you have authority over sin, sickness, over Satan, uh, and over every power in this world. All the other names of all the things, all the sicknesses, all the diseases, all the people that want to hold sway over us and, and, and make us weak and drag us down, you have authority over them. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, this morning. Amen. Amen. And we're finished praying, I think. Oh, it's praying a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> I just want to finish by saying that um, what we see in these chapters that we've read uh, is that Jesus is looking for that simple faith, isn't he? We should practice the same thing. He's looking for people to understand what they need to fully enter the kingdom of heaven. It's not, but it's not just healing. Um, it's not just healing of bodily sickness, but it's a healing of the heart. And it's, it, it needs to be answered with a commitment from us. Uh, earlier in this, this section of Matthew, we read about some people who came to Jesus and said, yeah, I'll go with you wherever you're going, whatever you want to do, I'll go with you, I'll be there, I won't be, you know, I won't be hanging behind. And Jesus gave them a really difficult answer, didn't he? He gave them a cryptic answer. We're not quite sure what happened to them. It doesn't seem as if they followed him in the end. Um, maybe they were, um, they, were, they were not like some of his disciples who got in the boat with him after that and went across the sea to... Uh, to the, the mission field at the other side in Gentile country. Maybe they could sense that there was a storm coming and they were a bit wiser. But they probably ignored Jesus. Matthew could have ignored him. And I think that's why he puts in here, in this, this last section, his own story of coming to faith. Matthew, who wrote Matthew's gospel, tells us how he came to faith. He probably heard Jesus. He probably ignored him day after day as he'd heard him in his town preaching and walking past in the streets, but finally he couldn't. And Jesus said, come, follow me. And he got up and he did it there and then. He chose to leave his business, to risk alienation from his colleagues, from his family, from his friends and people in his circle to follow Jesus. And he's showing us what Jesus taught about becoming his disciple. If you want to become his disciple, it's not just about having faith for your own healing in this life, or like some people, continually running after the latest healer or the latest miracle worker in town or elsewhere in the country, always looking for something more. No, it's not about that. It involves making a costly commitment to him, like Matthew did when he left his job and he left his way of life. It's about abandoning many of the old ways of thinking and working that you have, and sometimes even friends and family who reject Jesus um, and reject living under his direction. And it's about learning a whole new way of seeing the world. So it's about commitment. So we've had faith, we have commitment. Um, and as we're about to see, uh, as we go into chapter 10 next week, that we're not just saved and rescued by Jesus to go home and enjoy a Sunday lunch and say, wasn't that good? Um, we're saved by Jesus to, to go to become part of his team and to be sent on mission ourselves, to exercise his authority and power so that when we tell people about him, they will respond. When we pray for them, they will be healed or they will experience the work of God in their life in some way. We're being called to go out as he did, to allow him to use us to rescue others and that's in the ordinary places of life where we are every day, but it's also in some extraordinary places wherever he calls us to go, to get outside of our comfort zone and to tell people about Jesus. Faith, but it's not just about faith, it's about commitment. I wonder where you are in your commitment to him. Some people know that they want to follow him, but they never quite stepped over that line and gone, yes, Jesus, Okay, I'm going to go and get baptised. I'm going to show everybody that I'm following you. I'm going to turn around from these things that I know are wrong. I'm going to make that step. And it may be that they will continually go on searching and following Jesus, as many thousands of people did when he was in his ministry, but they never quite get into the kingdom. But Jesus calls us into his kingdom. Will you commit yourself to him? We'd love to talk to you more and, you know, as, as a church and as a uh, uh, leadership team and as people here, and I'm speaking to people online as well, um, we'd love to help you, um, help you to study the Bible, learn how to uh, 
understand God's word and put it into practice day by day and be a living disciple of Jesus. So just get in touch. And there'll be details later of how you can do that. So Lord Jesus, thank you that you're still the same today. Thank you for your grace and mercy that reaches out to everyone and especially to those who you know really need it. Lord, we're sorry when we've rejected people who we consider to be too difficult, too dangerous, people we consider to be too far down the road away from you, people that we find it difficult to talk to or that we despise. Forgive us, Lord. Change our hearts and help us who call ourselves believers to be ready to reach out to anyone that you're calling. And thank you that you accept anyone who comes with that commitment to receive you. You accept them into your kingdom. This morning I'd say to anyone listening as I pray, if you want to do that, reach out in faith, because again, it's just faith. Just that simple faith in Jesus that you need. Just reach out to him and ask him to come into your life, and he will. So, Lord, we, we pray for those who are listening now and who will listen in the future, that you will draw them into your kingdom and receive them as they commit their lives to you. Thank you for your amazing word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So that was a very good piece of scripture there, that chapter. You know, if Jesus refused to eat with sinners, he'd always be eaten alone. Because we're all sinners. Romans 3.10, everyone's a sinner. So how could he not eat with sinners? It would be the same if he'd eat with the Pharisees and not the tax collectors. Because everybody's a sinner. I think he's been a bit sarcastic there. It can come for those who admit they are sinners, not those who are self-righteous. You can't do anything for them. If you don't know you're sick, you don't go to the doctor, what can the doctor do for you? You know? And the miracles. You notice one thing throughout these, even the one in chapter 8 where Peter's mother was healed. She got up straight away and started cleaning, making him dinner. And the man who was lowered through the roof, he got up, took his mat. There's no need for any time to recuperate or get better because when Jesus heals, it's complete and instant complete and instant. It shows that he is the king. He is in charge. It's not one of these people who wave the coat at people and they fall over or they blow and the choir falls over. There's none of that in the Bible. Jesus just heals. He's real. He's real. And he's in full control. Even his own death, he was in full control. He didn't die. He didn't breathe his last till he said, it is finished. He decided when. So if I'm going to back one horse, it's that one. Get on that team. Get on that team. So I hope you're all going to take home what you've heard today. Very strong word. A word about commitment. A word about faith. We need these things. We need to exercise these things. Not just hear them. We need to exercise these things in our lives. Okay, so I'm going to invite Tim up with the notices. Tim, you're busy today. But your name is down, and I'm sure you put it down. <laughs> Welcome again, um, and thank you uh, to everybody for being patient this morning as we've had comings and goings, but it's because Sunday Club have been out on the streets um, having Sunday Club in the open, which is really good. I hope it went well. I've been thinking of you and praying for you guys as you've been out. This Tuesday um, is going to be the, uh, the, the celebration service in memory of our sister, Sister Harrison. Um, and uh, you see the lovely picture that, uh, that the family have got ready for the order of service on that day of her. Uh, it is at 11 o'clock at Farm Street um, Church down in Hockley, and I know Dion has spoken last time about getting lifts for people who couldn't get there and didn't have transport. Dion says to all those who've spoken to her about this, um, and lifts will be from 20 Albion Road, uh, by 10, 15 at the latest, you need to be there before then, I think, to get your lift. So if you have arranged it already with Dion, uh, come to 20 Albion Road for 10, 15, and you'll get a lift. 
Um, if you haven't arranged it and you still need a lift, try her. Give her a call. But, um, we want to be there to celebrate this, this uh, lovely lady's life, don't we? The lady of faith, the woman of faith uh, and of prayer and of action for the Lord. And I'm sure there'll be so much to say. Um, that it'll be a long day, but it'll be a good day. In two weeks' time, well, a week on Wednesday, we've got our next drop-in session, uh, which is running for those three hours from 11 o'clock till 2. Uh, please tell your friends and neighbours about it. There is free lunch, there are activities of all kinds there, and just a chance to sit down somewhere warm and to, uh, to be safe and to have a chat with us and with each other, uh, an opportunity for us to share good news with them. And uh, we also have our Dementia Cafe running, so people can come and talk to Elaine about, uh, about dementia-related issues and advice and signposting. Next Sunday, uh, Fran's going to be speaking. Uh, he'll be talking about uh, the next, next part of this bit of Matthew, which is Matthew chapter 10, and um, what it means to be disciples who've got a responsibility to go, as Jesus has commanded us to go and to preach his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, to the vulnerable. Um, and I say, oh, yes, happy birthday again to anybody who was born in May. And happy birthday especially to uh, Leah, who was 16 last week, which is amazing. Happy birthday, Leah. Uh, and I'm sure there are other people. We think we've sung happy birthday to our May babies already, haven't we? We haven't. No. I've got to lead it. Okay. Who's, had a, who's got a birthday coming in May who's here? Or has had one? Ariana. Lydia. Lydia. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I can, I can sing happy birthday. I can't do the, I can't do the fancy one, but I can, I can do the normal one if you like. Or if someone else would like to lead it, then please do. Okay. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear May babies. Happy birthday to you. Hooray! Congratulations. Nearly. If it's not your birthday yet, just save that for a day or two. Um, but yes, can I just say and explain that um, please get in touch with us. The details always come up on the screen. If you'd like to know more about following Jesus, if you'd like to know more about just going deeper with Jesus, get in touch with us. Let us know. I'm sure there's something that we can arrange to help you to grow in your faith. Um, I'd also like to just remind you, let you know that often after the live stream finishes, we just have a moment to pray for people, some people who we know have gone through difficult times for whatever reason, or might have an urgent need of prayer. And we don't want to necessarily broadcast it on YouTube um, because it might be personal. It might be something that we need to talk about and pray about as a church. So I would say that's another reason to maybe come back to church in person because there are things like that that we share together that we, we wouldn't do online. So um, I just encourage you, now that summer is nearly here and today it's supposed to be 20 degrees, come out and enjoy Come to church and worship with us. Amen? Right. Well, have a great, a great rest of the day and a great coronation weekend. And uh, enjoy your celebrations. And um, we'll see you soon. Bless you. Are we offline? Thank you.